out of space. I'm gonna have to move all of these plants back when when this video is over and I'm not looking forward to it. You know, it's gonna come and be like, what is this bush? They're getting sun. That's gonna be the excuse that we're going with. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I want to start this video off with an apology. I am a mom now and there's a very good chance that my child will interject at any point in this video. There's very little time to actually do these things um, when I'm alone. So I think I figure if I really want to get a head start on doing more videos for you guys, I just have to kind of go with the flow and kind of just film them whenever I can. I really want to share with you guys my my little plant collection. I have just been so immersed in the plant world lately and I feel like it probably has a lot to do with the pandemic and just like the regular stresses of everyday life and I find that plants are a really good escape for me to just kind of care for something um, and watch it grow. I mean I'm doing that with a child so it shouldn't really be any different but I feel like plants are just more I don't know plants just give you more i've always loved plants but i've never really knew how to care for them so i've really only always had two i've always had my little fiddle leaf fig right well she's not little anymore but i've always had my fiddle leaf fig here and my pothos i figured it's a good time to kind of show you guys all the plants that i have and tell you a little bit about them and how i care for them this here is my pothos and i believe the scientific name for this one is epipremnum Orium. If I'm wrong, I will put the, the name for it right here. But another name for it is a Devil's Ivy. This one I've had for about three or four years. I know it looks very small. That's because I wasn't really caring for it. So the leaves and the vines weren't growing as much as they should have. And they did actually grow vines. They were about a foot and a half, two feet long. I ended up trimming them back and I repotted it. And she's doing a lot better now. I'll show you guys a little video that I posted on Instagram of what she looked like before I repotted her and before you see all this growth here. But ever since I've repotted her, she shot out about six or seven leaves, which is really nice. And she just keeps shooting out more. And there's leaves coming out of the soil. I don't know if you can see there's a little baby one right there um, but she's doing really well and I'm very very happy with her this is one that I just um, I propagated in water and then she shot her roots out and I just potted her up yesterday so hopefully she will adjust really well to her new environment and um, and grow so this is pretty much what she's looking like but this has I just cut the stems from the mother leaf here the mother plant here and I just made it into a little plant this is a silver satin pothos. The scientific name is Syndapsis pictus. And basically it has these really gorgeous kind of satiny leaves. That's why it's called the silver satin pothos. They're really nice and smooth. And apparently it's not a pothos, but I think because it vines like one and the leaves look very similar, people just call them satin pothoses, but she just sprouted a new leaf right here and she's sprouting a new one somewhere down here, like in the vicinity, but she might need repotting because her roots are on their way out and I do see a little bit of root rot down there too. So I feel like I need to repot her um, just so that she can really kind of grow and blossom. But this is pretty much what she's looking like and I'm very excited to see her get bigger and grow. So I'm giving her lots of sun and I'm also gonna be fertilizing her later on today. This is um, what is commonly called a croton and the scientific name for this one is Codeum variegatum and I just have her sitting in like a, she's just sitting in an old uh, Bath and Body Works candle holder. And I don't know, I just think she looks really nice in here. I think she looks really pretty. I actually put her in here because the pot that I do have on hand is just not big enough for her, but I don't want to repot her just yet because she's very fickle. So I just wanted to kind of like really get used to her environment, even though I've had her for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks now. Um, sh she hasn't lost any leaves. She was getting a new leaf pop out here, but it looks like that's since dried up. So I don't think she's going to be giving me that. So once she's like fully settled in and she starts popping out leaves, then maybe I'll repot her. But for now, I think she's really fine. This is a philodendron Brazil. Scientific name for this one is uh, philodendron heteraceum, and she is shooting off new sprouts down here. I see little bumps on her stem, and so she's doing really well. When I got her, she was kind of droopy, but I've been giving her lots of bright light, and she got a little bit of sunburn, 
but otherwise she's loving the bright light. I let her dry out and uh, water her in between drying out and she seems to really like it. She had a couple exposed stems. It looks like she's been propagated and so I just kind of like stuck those back in the soil and I'm hoping that something happens with them. Well, next up is one of two peperomias that I own. This is the peperomia obtusifolia variegata and variegata from variegated which is basically the different coloration on the leaves. You see that green and then the light green or the white really on the outer parts of the leaves. This is what is commonly called a prayer plant. Prayer plant. Um, the scientific name is Maranta lucanura and it is the red Maranta or the red prayer plant and it's called the red Maranta because if you look at the underside of the leaves they're red and then the veining in the leaf itself is red and it's just really beautiful and this is called a prayer plant because at night they fold up like they're praying and then they kind of drop back down during the day but apparently she likes distilled water I'm not going to get her distilled water. I'm just going to give her regular Ontario tap water. I feel like the water in our area is also pretty clean. It gets tested very regularly. And so um, I feel like she should do fine based on other influencers that I see who do have this plant who live in my general vicinity. They give their marantas or their prayer plants tap water and they seem to be doing just fine. So I'm going to, um, when time comes to water her, I'm just gonna give her tap water and see how she does. I'm running out of space. I have this one. This is uh, Pilea peperomioides, um, commonly known as the Pilea plant, the Chinese money plant, uh, pancake plant, the UFO plant. UFO because as you can see, the leaves and stems kind of look like little spaceships. And they're also called friendship plants because the mother plant typically shoots out new pups and then you can pop those out and propagate them and give them to your friends, which is why they're called friendship plants. I did try propagating it, it failed. Um, all the leaves just kind of fell off. I don't think she was ready yet. I don't think her roots were very established. I keep her right here on um, our TV stand where she gets about maybe 40 minutes of of direct sunlight um, in the evenings while the sun is setting. She gets sunburned very easily and she really seems to like it and she seems to be thriving because when I got her, she was kind of like leaning one way. The one thing with this plant, if you do decide to get it, is that you need to rotate her maybe every two or three days as she grows because naturally she will reach towards the sun and these plants are expected to get very big and push out new leaves and the stem is gonna grow upwards almost like a tree and, it's, and the leaves are just gonna kind of like envelop the plant itself so um you really want to kind of rotate her so she grows up upwards as you can see she's still leaning a little bit left so i've been facing her this way and she seems to be coming back so i'm going to keep her this way for maybe about a couple more days and then i'm going to rotate her again um in uh maybe by next wednesday we'll see how that goes this uh is a very very new 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 plant this is just one day old i got her yesterday this is um, a peperomia as well. It is the unvariegated form of this plant. So these are both pretty much the same plants. Only difference is this is variegated, as you can see the coloring on this one, and this one is not variegated. So this is also peperomia obtusifolia, but not variegata. Peperomias are such beautiful, beautiful plants, and I got this one as a really great deal. It was $3 at Home Depot. This was a wishlist plant. Um, this is a rubber tree. The scientific name is Ficus elastica. She's been giving off new leaves, like this one just unfurled maybe two days ago. She's looking gorgeous and brand new. There's a new one coming out right here, which is really pretty. And there's a new one right here that's just forming. Um, but this is a wish list tree for me. I have wanted this tree for the longest time, but they're still super expensive. And I got this one for $25 from my plant lady. But anything bigger than this, you're gonna typically see for about 40, 50, or 60, even as much as $120. And so this was a really good deal and I had to have it. So my next wish list tree would be the variegated form of this one, which is the Ficus Elastica Teneki and it's just this really beautiful variegated plant. This one is probably one of the most common plants. 
out there. This is an Aglaonema commutatum, and basically uh, another name for this is a Chinese evergreen. This plant is well known for its foliage, so it gives beautiful variegated leafy foliage that looks kind of fake almost um, when you take a look at it, and um, it's really nice. It does uh, kind of, when you cut it, gives off like this really sticky clear sap. I'm not entirely sure if it is good for humans, so just keep that in mind um, whenever you are pruning a tree like this. Um, I recently repotted her because she was extremely root bound. She was in a four inch pot and then I tried to put her in a six inch pot and she was still, when I undid her roots, they were so fat and juicy. They were too big for a six inch pot. They would have just stifled in there. So I ended up putting her in a 10 inch pot because that's what I had on hand. So this is what she's sitting in right now. And in case you guys are interested, I get my pots from a variety of places. These round slate like ones ones like this one here as well as this one for my uh, peperomia I got from Canadian Tire this is from their Canadian Tire this is from their canvas brand um, for Canadian Tire but I love this tree she's her foliage is so so beautiful she almost looks like a peace lily but not quite the leaves are a little bit thicker than a peace lily and these are apparently expected to get pretty large as well and like some of them I've seen that are like 10 years old or more they end up like growing really long thick stems and they eventually start branching out but I repotted her she seems to be doing okay she is shooting off a new leaf right here see that right there so she's doing so okay so far so I'm really liking her and she looks beautiful so this one is another ficus family tree <laughs> ficus family tree and what's really interesting is i didn't even realize i had so many ficus type trees so i think i have three um this is a ficus microcarpa um also known as a chinese banyan tree you can shape it into a bonsai but i really just like the bushiness of it and i really want her to just kind of get bigger and bushier i don't really see this this tree um, very often in my opinion anyways and I don't really see people keeping it as a bushy tree people often want to shape it into a type of bonsai but I really like it the leaves are nice and thick it almost looks like a ZZ in a sense and so I was very uncertain that this was actually a ficus microcarpa but it is a ficus microcarpa and she is pushing out new leaves everywhere I don't plan on turning her into a bonsai I just like her to be like all nice and bushy and I think she looks really good. This is my Monstera Deliciosa. She is a gorgeous, gorgeous kind of jungle plant. She loves the sun. One second guys, my kid has to go to the bathroom. All right, sorry about that. This is a new leaf that she just popped out. As you can see some green veining in here. She is slowly changing to a dark green. She comes out a lot lighter than this. Um, but this is a nice big healthy leaf that popped out right after I repotted her and then there's a new one showing up right there. Um, I did cut a, a piece from this mother plant and propagated it into a little baby and I'll show you really quickly what the baby one looks like. So this is my baby Monstera. So I had her propagating in water for about three weeks and I recently just potted her up yesterday. I got this pot from an antique market and I had Hina drill drainage holes in the bottom for me and so I potted her up and I'm really hoping she catches and starts shooting out new stuff. I'm going to keep an eye on her for the next few days and I really hope that she adjusts really well to her new environment but this is pretty much what she's looking like and hopefully if she shoots out I haven't quite decided yet. I do have a personal connection to this pot so I might keep it for myself but I think I will be propagating her again soon from the mother plant just to kind of have a plant to give to maybe friends and family. Um, so we'll see how this one does. Next one I wanna show you guys is this one here. This is a peace lily and oh, this will make a really good thumbnail. Also known as a Spathophyllum wallisii 
And essentially, this is just one of those um, air purifying plants that's on NASA's list. Very simple plant, easy to take care of, shooting out lots of white flowers and blooms when they feel like it. Um, they bloom, they dry up, they fall off, they go away, more come out, shoot out new leaves. The good thing about this plant, especially if you're a beginner, is that this plant droops when it's thirsty. So whenever she wants water, her leaves just kind of drop. And then you water her and then like in a couple hours maybe, she'll just shoot right back up. So I can tell right now that she's still not quite thirsty yet. Her her stems are still standing tall and she's looking really good. My mom got me this one. She paid $7 for this one, I believe, at Home Depot. And uh, she's doing really well. And I recently just moved her to our master bath because she's an air purifying plant. So I thought she'd do really well in there and she might genuinely like the humidity. I initially had her in a high traffic corner of the house and I feel like she wasn't really getting any much light. So her soil still hasn't dried out since I've watered her two weeks ago. And so um, I want her to get more light so that her soil can dry out even more because apparently the soil can get um, like uh, mold or fungus, which is not bad. Um, it's just because it hasn't dried out. So the water just kind of sits there and, and, uh, and kind of, uh, fungifies if that's a word. <laughs> but anyways, this is my beautiful peace lily. And, uh, I think it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. If you look, there's a flower popping out of a stem right there. See, she's like just kind of squeezing out of the stem right there. Gorgeous. This is my ZZ plant. Uh, scientific name for this one is the Zamiacolcus zamiafolia. And ZZ from those two names. So it grows a whole stem full of leaves, like this one here. This is brand spanking new, which is why the leaves are a lot lighter in color than the rest of them. But these plants are super, super hardy. They're very easy for a plant beginner like myself because I pretty much just kind of water it as needed and um, she basically waters herself because she has bulbs these massive bulbs that kind of store water and supplies the leaves and the rest of the plant with water as needed and so that just makes this a really easy plant to take care of she doesn't need a lot of light she doesn't need a lot of water she just kind of grows and does her thing if you remember to water her once a month she'll be good and she'll be happy with that um, but this is my ZZ and she's just kind of springing out really nicely which I really love so that's her this is one of my first propagations. This is a propagation of my fiddle leaf fig tree and she is sprouting roots. If you see this popcorn like texture at the base of the plant, that is where new roots are coming out. And so these ones take forever, forever in a day. Uh, to sprout roots because this has been propagating since the same time I propagated my pothos and my monstera and as you can see I've potted them up so I'm anticipating maybe it's, it'll probably be another three weeks before I can plant this one um, which is not bad she'll still be planted in the growing season she's just a slow grower but hopefully she will pop out soon this one is a new cutting uh, from my pothos plant i really want her to vine well um, much like my satin silver or my silver silvery ann or satin pothos or whatever this one's called um, i really want her to vine well with her leaves vining closely together growing closely together so i trimmed off a bit of her vine which was very kind of like bottom heavy and i kind of am hoping to propagate it uh, this into a new plant. So hopefully by the end of the month, I will have two pothoses. Most of these leaves also weren't very healthy. If you look, this one has a lot of like brown, browning in there. Um, this one here did not unfurl well. Still hasn't even fully unfurled. So it does have a bit of variegation from the lack of chlorophyll. And then this one also is not looking super healthy. So I'm really hoping to propagate those and hopefully make them look a little bit uh, fuller. Philodendron Brazil here 
and I have two cuttings of this, but oh, she's right here. Um, I did do some cuttings of my philodendron. This is what they're both looking like. Um, they all could not fit in the same container, so I just kind of split them in two, and then I will put them together once I'm ready to uh, kind of pot them up. But I really need to keep an eye on one of these because the leaf stem part is really short. So I just have to make sure that she stays underwater, but she's just starting to kind of shoot out those little bumps where the roots will come from. So I'm really liking how this is all going. My fiddle leaf fig, I will pan up so that you can see her. <laughs> she I've had for four years, as long as I've had my pothos. And essentially she has been through the ringer from not being cared for very well. I really should t should have taken better care of her, but I am caring for her now and she's doing really well. She's shooting out two new buds, uh, which means that she's gonna start branching out soon. So you know those beautiful fiddle leaf fig trees that you see with lots of branches and lots of leaves. She should start doing that soon. Um, I repotted her recently, so she's in this big beautiful pot and she's getting lots of love and lots of fertilizer and she's growing and she's doing well and she's responding very well to um, how she's been treated lately. She's about four or five feet away from the window so she doesn't get direct light because her leaves can get sunburn. I actually believe this leaf here has a bit of sunburn on her right there. Um, but I do rotate her once in a while. As you can see, she's kind of leaning towards the sun now. So it's probably time to rotate her again like this so that she can get some more sun that is it for my plant collection it looks very different from how it started i hope it wasn't too long <laughs> um, but i will definitely try and like piece it down uh compact fully mm. I don't know if that's a word. If you guys are interested in seeing more videos like this, like how I sell my plants, how I source my pots and all this kind of stuff, let me know in the comment section below and I will be happy to do it for you. I promise I won't turn into a plant channel. Although, honestly, I wouldn't complain if I were a plant channel because I mean, come on, it's plants. Super exciting. But if you guys really like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.